Welcome to Bible Believers Fellowship in the ministry of BBFOhio.com and our two-part study titled, The Islamic Mahdi is Not the Antichrist. As we begin with a look at Revelation chapter 17, verses 12 and 13, which is a text we will make frequent reference to in this study. Now our study in Worthington took up nearly an entire hour, so we must keep this uh, intro short and sweet. But as we begin this study, I want to mention the fact that those letters continue to come in and we greatly appreciate them. Please keep them coming to P.O. Box 662, Worthington, Ohio, 43085, or by visiting bbfohio.com and using the Contact Us button, as well as by social media and email. And we will continue to read those from time to time at the beginning of our studies. Amen. Amen. As you can see from the very start, I'm taking a position. I'm not asking a question. <laughs> the Islamic Mahdi is not the Antichrist. That's just one of the pictures that you can find out there representing him. But we're going to read a couple verses from uh, Revelation chapter 17. And uh, you'll see how this fits into this discussion as we go on. We've uh, been in Revelation 17 for a while now, and we're just going to move as quickly as we can, which means we'll probably be there for another couple of months. <laughs> Revelation 17 is one of the least studied and most ignored passages in the Bible, let alone in the book of Revelation. Let's go ahead and read these two verses. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. These have one mind, and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Now, a lot of the uh, teaching you hear on this these days, uh, I just call a fad. And Antichrist fads come and go. But uh, one way that Satan discredits the truth is by creating confusion. Uh, today, there is confusion uh, reigning from pulpits and among uh, people who claim to be Bible teachers on, on YouTube and, and on the radio. And that's Satan's best weapon. Uh, if you take the new versions and set the King James Bible off to the side even, but you take the new versions and you compare them, you find confusion. Then when you compare them to the King James Bible, there are contradictions and it's a complete corruption. And that's Satan. He's, Satan is the most intelligent created being yep. in existence. Yep. Jesus was not created. He was the creator. And he created Lucifer and Lucifer was the highest of creation but rebelled. So you've got to expect that Satan's going to be smarter than me and you combined. Times a hundred. Thousand. But that's what the date setters and the Antichrist hunters are accomplishing. You know, remember the Herald camping, date setting, and all that. And uh, these people who write books saying they've identified the Antichrist, they're just causing confusion. And so they just leave you, uh, you know, it, people just get discouraged, frustrated. Here's some past candidates for Antichrist who just did not succeed. Um, the Emperor Nero, of course, is the first one. And there's a lot of people who try to claim that all the book of Revelation was fulfilled in the first century during the life of Nero and the time of the apostles, which is nonsense. But they'll say that Nero was the uh, Antichrist. He was an Antichrist. And folks, there's been many, and there's, there's going to still be many as long as the Lord tarries. But uh, he wasn't the Antichrist. And you know, ever heard of Napoleon Bonaparte? And uh, he, he was a candidate, and a lot of preachers back then called him the Antichrist, said he was. And I'll just throw this in there that I believe that the final pope will be the Antichrist. Yep. And as far as I know, neither Nero nor Napoleon were popes. So that kind of narrows that down. This guy wasn't a pope either, but uh, people said Henry Kissinger was the Antichrist. He is, in, he is an Antichrist, and he was probably one of the better candidates because he's a Jew. And uh, who, who was it that kissed Jesus and betrayed him? Judas. 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 And he is the son of perdition. Yep. Yeah. So the Antichrist is going to be a Jew. Yep. That doesn't mean we hate Jews. No. There are a lot of stupid white people out there. Does that mean I hate my own race? No. no. There's a lot of stupid black people out there. I'm not a racist and hate blacks. 
there's a lot of stupid Jews out there. Amen? Amen. Yeah. And Judas was a traitor. And that doesn't mean I hate Jews because I say that. And it doesn't mean I hate Jews because I say the Antichrist will be a Jew. And sadly, um, Henry Kissinger has been a Jewish traitor just like Judas to his own people. And we could go into detail about that. But Ronald Reagan was a candidate because his name was Ronald Wilson Reagan. If you add him up, it's 666. But that didn't turn out. And then uh, Mikhail Gorbachev, he came uh, complete with a mark on his forehead, you know. Oh, wow. But uh, he wasn't, he wasn't, uh, he, he's Antichrist, don't get me wrong, but he's not the Antichrist. Of course, uh, Pope Benedict really played the role well. <laughs> I mean, he looked the part, but he wasn't. Um, he's an Antichrist, but he's not the Antichrist. And today is no different. The claim of proving who Antichrist is continues. Here's one example of present Antichrist candidates. This guy named Joe Vancouvering is a prophecy teacher, and he picked this guy named Prince Hassan bin Talal of Jordan. And um, so I just never pictured the Antichrist looking like that. No. I mean, his face is about as goofy looking as mine. I mean, uh, the face for radio. Uh, I, th I think the Antichrist would be an attractive figure. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Of course, Barack Obama is called the Antichrist by a lot of people all the time. And I try to tell them he's not the Antichrist. He, I believe he is an Antichrist. He's not the anti Antichrist. And this guy, people are saying that this guy is the Antichrist. He's an Antichrist. And he, he denies the gospel. And he's pushing for uh, ecumenical unity of all religions and all that. Um, Jorge Mario... Bergoglio, or something like that, <laughs> Pope, known as Pope Francis. But the most recent fad gaining popularity for obvious reasons is that of the Islamic Mahdi. And I say obvious reasons because of what's going on with Islam, an Islamic State claiming to be a caliphate. By the way, folks, a caliphate means that they claim to be unifying all Muslims around the world into one huge governing body who then will eventually rule the world. So you can see by that very definition and, the, and what we'll see about the Mahdi that there is good reason to suspect that he might be the Antichrist. And one of the most vocal and popular advocates of this is a man named Waleed Chubat, and I spelled his name wrong. Um, but he is a former terrorist, um, at least that's his testimony, and he's got a really incredible testimony if it's true. And I say if because I don't know, I wasn't there. And there's some people claiming he's exaggerated. I don't know. I'm not accusing him of that here, here tonight. But I'm just letting you know that. And uh, this, I want to show you a couple of clips from Waleed and things he says. It just, it'd be better to let him tell you what it is he believes, and then we'll, we'll test it. We'll see what he has to say. Waleed Shubat received a revelation of the end times that is a major paradigm shift from what most Bible scholars teach. Now he wants to share this with you. Call now and get Waleed Shubat received a revelation of the end times that is a major paradigm shift from what most Bible scholars teach. Waleed Shubat received a revelation of the end times. Waleed Shubat received a revelation. There's a reason why I'm repeating that. Shubat received a revelation of the end times. Waleed Shubat received a revelation. Is it a revelation? We'll start right there. God revealed this to Waleed. See, what I'm trying to teach you is how to discern. When you sit and listen to teachers, you need to test them. Acts 17.11 says you should be doing that right now. Mm -hmm. yes, exactly. What you're hearing from me. I am Greg Miller. I'm a wicked sinner saved by grace. Thank you, God. But I got an incredible book. Amen. Amen. Amen? And that's all I'm here doing is teaching that. And that's what every teacher is, and that includes Wally. Now, um, he claimed... And, and, now, in fairness, it was the advertiser who said it, but I'm sure Waleed signed off on that. And uh, revelation is defined as a surprising and previously unknown fact, and it's the divine or supernatural disclosure to humans of something relating to human existence or to the world. In other words, if you claim to have revelation, you claim that God has given you something that no one else ever had before. And that is heretical. Amen. Correct. In our time, God is not providing new revelation. Amen. God has given us a book, and it is revelation. Amen. But you are not, if you receive new revelation, then you have to try to get it into that book. Right. It yeah. needs to be added to the Bible. 
And nearly all the false cults and isms began with new revelation. Whether you want to talk about the Mormon church and Joseph Smith had the Book of Mormon, doctrines and covenants and all that, he claimed new revelation. All the isms and cults you find, uh, Seventh-day Adventists down there started when Ellen G. White claimed to have new revelation. And uh, Jim Jones had new revelation and uh, had a bunch of people killed following him. So for clarification, God teaches us new things. Amen? Amen. New to me, new to you, not new to the world. Amen. God gave us all revelation in the Bible. But then when we read the Bible and we pray, God teaches us that. Amen. See? That's illumination, not revelation. And a lot of these charismaniacs out there are running around telling everybody, oh, I've got a word of revelation. You know, they're liars. Just, that's simple. So don't give them any money and don't give them your time. Amen. Claiming new revelation is also a dangerous business. I'm not going to judge Waleed's soul. I'm not going to judge anybody's soul. I can't judge souls. But I can judge what people say. I can judge what people do. And if you believe it's wrong to judge, you believe wrong. Amen. The Bible tells us to judge righteous judgment. But that's the key is I can't be a hypocrite and judge you for something when I'm doing the same thing or something is bad. In the same way, I can judge what is being taught. I can judge. I'm, I'm commanded to do so. And in Revelation 22, 18, it says, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, if any man shall add unto these things, that's claiming new revelation, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. Verse 19, And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. All I'm saying is, I ain't touching it. I warn people and I'll tell you, I, when I see people claiming new revelation, I back away. And so should you. Amen. Mark them and avoid them. Revela uh, Romans 16, 17. So next. In this Prophetic 6 DVD series, you will find out the real danger behind the Arab Spring as radical Muslim leaders take control over Egypt, Libya, and Syria. Understand that... I mean, this situation with Egypt, Syria, uh, Libya, and Syria is setting up the Antichrist. Well, now, Egypt, since they made these videos and since Swalid went on his speaking tour, Egypt is actually moving into the exact direction that Ezekiel 38 says that they would, and that's of neutrality. And if you haven't been keeping up with things, Egypt has backed off what the, a year or even a year and a half ago when mu the Muslim Brotherhood were in charge, they were uh, radical. And now the, the leadership over there now has backed off. And, they're, uh, and Israel is very happy with what they're seeing with Egypt. Well, that's what Ezekiel said would happen. And uh, uh, Egypt will be one of those lodging a complaint when Israel is invaded by, in the Gog-Magog conflict. If you don't know what I'm talking about in the Gog-Magog conflict, we have that on video. And it is when Russia, I believe out of economic desperation, joins with an Islamic confederation, which will include Iran, Iraq, and Libya, and Ethiopia, and Turkey, and they will come in and attack uh, Israel. And uh, Egypt, and uh, Jordan, and Saudi Arabia will be among those who will lodge a complaint with the United Nations and say, what are you doing? You're just coming down here just, you know, for filthy, uh, for, to loot. You're just coming down for money. You can't just attack people for that reason. It's all in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Yeah, I'll read it. Good, good book. So Libya and Syria now, they will be destroyed with the Mahdi in the Gog and Magog War. And that's what I want you to see is that the Islamic Mahdi is going to look like an Antichrist, because he is one. And he's going to bring about a caliphate to some extent. It won't be complete. Like I said, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, um, and uh, Egypt will not be among them. But he will unite most Islamic countries to come against Israel, and they'll be destroyed. And that's all laid out in our study of Gog and Magog. In Ezekiel 38, verse 18, it says, And it shall come to pass at the same time, when Gog shall come against the land of Israel, saith the Lord, that my fury shall come up in my face. That's God talking. And he says in verse 22, And I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood. 
and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. Folks, this is how real this book is. God doesn't just say, I'm just going to kill them all. He gives you details of how he's going to do it. And if you study war, you'll find more men died in wars like civil, the Civil War and World War I, for example, from pestilence mm -hmm. than from bullets. Yes. And that's how real this book is. So another clarification, you've heard of the Arab Spring, and they made reference to it in the video. It's not setting the stage for Antichrist. It's setting the stage for the Gog-Magog War. Mm -hmm. That's what the Arab Spring is doing. It's not for the Antichrist. Now after that, that will help the Antichrist. And we don't know exactly when the Gog-Magog War is going to happen. The Bible doesn't seem to tell us that. I haven't found it yet, and I haven't found any credible source that says they have. But if it happens about the same time as the rapture, then it sets the world up for the Antichrist. So it's a setting of the stage. So next... And Syria. Understand that Bible prophecy clearly reveals that the ten-nation alliance will not be European, but Muslim nations. Dis you hear that? We've studied about the ten horns, the ten kings, and he's, he's saying that the Bible clearly states that these will be Muslim co uh, countries and only Muslim countries. Well, that's just not true. And it's a, a main claim made by this Islamic Antichrist crowd is that the end time map is not global, but Middle Eastern. You get that? How many of you heard what I just said? Yeah. You got to get that. The Bible says, and we're going to see a couple of passages here, that when the Antichrist sets up his kingdom, it's global. Mm -hmm. The whole Islamic Mahdi system is set up on the idea that it's only Middle Eastern. You got to get that. In Revelation 17, 12, we read it says, And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings, which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings with uh, one hour with the beast. Now think about this. Couldn't be Islamic. They already have their kingdoms. You say, well, how could it be the other ones? Right there. Behind closed doors, the Club of Rome, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Trilateral Commission, the United Nations, all these groups are taking the world map and dividing it into ten regions. Isn't that something? Do you know what the number 10 is all about? Bible numerics? Huh? Well, the Ten it's the number of Gentile. Yeah. The Gentile nations are set up in a... By God, you'll see the number 10 relates to the Gentiles. And here the Gentiles themselves are setting up 10 regions which will have 10 regional horns or kings. They haven't done it yet. Did you see the verse? They've received no kingdom as yet. The Bible is telling you, keep your eye out, it ain't happened yet. Mm -hmm. And these guys teaching about the Islamic Mahdi are saying, yes, it has. No, no it hadn't. Yeah, John? Yeah, well, real quick, in uh, Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, in the Hebrew text, it has seven words. So it's going to the Jews. Mm -hmm. The King James Bible, it has ten words. Amen. Because it's going to the Jews. That's Bible. right. Bye. Amen. <laughs> Yeah, Brother John's going to have to do some Bible numerics for us, one of these messages he teaches. Better not be the one I'm out of town, though. <laughs> That's true. Turn that right around on me, Johnny. Appreciate that. <laughs> He's tacky. Anyway, um, look at what Daniel chapter 7 says about these ten horns. First, Daniel 7.23 says, Thus he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdoms, and shall devour the whole earth, and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. Now we told you there's times where these uh, kingdoms are referred to in Nebuchadnezzar's day, of uh, t talking about the kingdoms that have come leading up to. And then there's other times where it's talking about the ten that are about to appear. And so you have that difference. But over in, then you go into verse 24, and it then talks about these ten kingdoms. The same that we're talking about in Revelation. Now think about what I'm saying, folks. You got a book that has a book of Daniel 
that was written about uh, six centuries before the apostles wrote the New Testament. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then you have a book of Revelation written by one of the apostles. Mm -hmm. And they just go together like a glove. Talk about being up to date. Up to date and fitting together in a way that two different men separated by 600 years mm -hmm. writing in such a way that they look like commentaries of one another. So these ten horns, it's a kingdom that shall arise and it'll be, uh, it'll devour the whole earth. This is a global, not just Middle Eastern. So these ten Muslim horns are ten kings of a global government, not an Islamic caliphate. So again, piece by piece, you can see this doesn't stand the test when these people are teaching this about the Islamic Caliphate. So here's next. Discover what the scriptures say about the United States role in Bible prophecy. Learn that Islam's money, their long-awaited Messiah, fits the exact biblical description of the Antichrist. Find out the truth. What? The exact? And, yeah, that's, a, that's, that's exactly wrong. <laughs> <laughs> now think about this. After the rapture, the Jews flee America to Israel, and this nation is left void of Christians and Jews. Wow. Think about that. People wonder, why isn't America mentioned in, the, uh, in Bible prophecy? And you have some people claim they are. They're not. No. You have to torture the text to make it sound like or look like it's America. Mm -hmm. When the rapture takes place, all pro-Israel Christians are gone, and the Jews are flying the coop and going back home. This country, is there's a payday coming, folks. Amen, brother. Yes. In America, I'm praying it waits till after the rapture. Amen. Because th th there's no guarantee. Mm -hmm. That's right. But there are how many dead babies whose blood cries out for judgment? Yes. Amen. America falls into line with the ten king world government. Don't you kid yourself, it don't. It does. Now, Daniel does talk about those who will, there'll be pockets of resistance. So there'll be a bunch of NRA members out there fighting the Antichrist. But that doesn't mean they're going to be successful, and it doesn't mean it'll be of any real consequence as far as America is concerned as a country. So this Mahdi Antichrist. The Mahdi does not fit the exact description of Antichrist uh, any more than any other devil who has risen to lead his people into a devastating war. In other words, yes, there are some similarities. The Mahdi is going to bring a bunch of Muslims together to join with Russia and be destroyed. But that's not an exact <laughs> description of the Antichrist. Here's five marks real quick. Number one, I already said this. Um, if you don't believe that the Antichrist is going to have Jewish DNA, you just don't know your Bible. Right, right, right. The, the Jews aren't going to accept some Gentile named Greg Miller as their Antichrist. No. I gave up on that a few years ago. Because I realized he's got to be a Jew. Amen. But he also had the Vatican horn. You say, well, how's that? There are a bunch of genetic Jews in the College of Cardinals right Amen. now. Amen. He just has to be a genetic Jew and head up the whore. Yep. And it could happen, could happen with Francis. And it could happen with the next one. He'll rule the global government. I got my ideas, you know. Oh, Charlie, I'm glad you asked. Um, what, I, what I think might happen is, this is my guess, but if you think about it, you have the Islamic Mahdi and Russia totally destroyed. Ezekiel says five out of six are destroyed. Yeah. They go home with only one-sixth of their army. Yeah. And then you have the rapture, either before or after that. And millions disappear. And then you have all these other things that start happening before the seals start to break. Mm -hmm. yeah. And the world is begging for someone to step forward. There's already two billion people on this planet who worship the Pope. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And you just removed all the Christians and killed off most of the rabid Muslims. Who's going to stand in the way now? Yeah. The Hindus have just added him as one of their gods. The Buddhists, they don't. The atheists, you know, they've already proven they have no morals. They don't have no qualms with that. Agnostics, they're like, well, I don't know, I don't care, you know. That's how I'm agnostic. That, 
you're not going to have any problem getting the whole world with the exception of some pockets of resistance following the Pope and this global government and he will confirm the Mosaic Covenant and by the way uh, he's already work the Pope is already working on moving his headquarters to Jerusalem wow. they've already got a portion of Jerusalem that they own and all they got to do is move in and then he'll get down there and he'll get itchy after about three and a half years and say this isn't good enough and he'll walk right into the temple and set himself up as God yep. you say how would the Pope do that he already takes the titles of God yeah. Holy Father that's only my God in heaven Amen. but the Pope calls himself that and so then that's what I, was, I jumped ahead of myself but after he uh, in in confirming that Mosaic Covenant, that allows the Jews to commence sacrificing cute little lambs, shedding of blood, and he's going to walk in there and claim to be God and commit the abomination. So the Mahdi will head up the Islamic Confederacy in the Gog Magog conflict and be destroyed. He will not be the Antichrist. Let's look at another one here. The shocking truth about the meaning of 666, the mark of the beast. Uncover the truth that Allah is not the same God as that of Christians and Jews. <laughs> I'll start with that last one. I'll start with that last one first. Of course, yeah, okay. Of course, Allah is not the same as the God of the Bible. But Walid is reaching out to Sid Roth, yeah. TBN, and Daystar viewers. Mm -hmm. So you don't take that for granted with that crowd. And I'm here to tell you, I've dealt with them. There's some of them that just, uh, so, uh, I mean, think about it. What kind of person is going to give, send money to those people? They've got to be about as, uh, we were talking earlier, Jimmy, and I, uh, earlier about how, uh, you know, discernment is so rare and common sense is so rare. True. And that proves it right there, just those networks. So, what is this shocking truth about the meaning of the number 666 that he advertised? Well, Here's what Walid claims. Wisdom, let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. Notice a man. That's in my book, by the way, that I cover that and explain. That's Joe that Vancouvering. Detail. And his number God's is news. 600, three score and six. Several years back, I taught a message on the golem and an understanding of the golem. And uh, I brought out just briefly at the end of that message, because I, I, I only saw with the light that I had at the time. But I knew there was, there was far more. We think of 666. And there's been so many prognostications and so many things said about the mark of the beast. And, and we've all heard it, and we've all probably taught it. You know, I mean, I've written scripts on, you know, microchips, and that's real big right now, and all this kind of thing. But when I saw your explanation, in your book of this. It was just so staggering to me. And I included, as you know, a few things from your teaching in my book, but you can explain it far better than I. Will you take a few minutes and just give us your understanding of this because it's gonna be so enlightening to so many people. It's Kai, Sai, and Stigma yes. in the original language. I had to show you that. One of the most insane things going on today is people telling average Joes who don't even, don't even really have a good grasp of English <laughs> to use Greek and Hebrew. Oh, right. yeah. so silly. Dear preacher, dear college professor, are you insane? Amen. That concludes part one of our study. Be sure to tune in for part two or find part two of this message along with hundreds of other free Bible studies and video and mp3 audio at bbfohio.com and also tune in 24 hours a day to bbfohioradio.com and share these free resources with your loved ones. I am Pastor Greg and thank you for listening.